Hi, this is Ocean Green with Planetside Software, and we recently partnered with Pixel Plow Render Farm as our new official render farm provider. And uh, working with the Pixel Plow Render Farm is a little bit different, uh, smoother, faster, and easier than working with most render farms. So we wanted to just show you what it's actually like to work with their platform today. So we're going to take a quick look at that. Uh, we're going to be working with the new benchmark scene that we've got in development right now. Here you can see it in the background in uh, Open Intergen 3 here. And uh, one of the main differences with Pixel Plow is that they have a, a small piece of software that runs locally on your machine, making it uh, not only much easier to submit jobs and to check on the status of them, but also to receive frames dynamically as they're completed, which is a really cool and unique feature. So it runs in your system tray. It's uh, very low on memory and other resources. It just sits there and uh, waits for you know commands. Uh, it doesn't take up you know any real resources or anything like that. Uh, it allows you to do a couple things. You can submit a job, you can check on the uh, status of your queued jobs, and you can also restart the, the replication agent, which is only really necessary if uh, you encounter an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and submit job here. And uh, I'm going to run through this kind of quickly because I'm going to do it twice. So you can see here at the top is a list of the rendering uh, applications. And uh, two versions of Terrigen here, a couple of them. Terrigen 2.5 is also still supported along with 3.1. We're going to select 3.1. We're going to navigate to the folder that holds the TGD file uh, and the scene assets that we want to render. Now, um, when you submit a project to Pixelplow, you want to make sure that you're, you have just a single TGD file. You can't have multiple TGDs, so you want to um, stick your TGD, your, your scene file, in uh, its own folder. And uh, all of the assets that it needs to render should also be in that folder. In this case, we've got just a single TGD. There's no assets. This is intended to be a self-contained benchmark. So we can just uh, select the animation folder here where the TGD is, click OK, and it's going to load up the settings from there. Uh, if you did need to get your assets that were scattered around uh, on your hard drive into a single place, you can use the Export Gathered Project feature here in uh, Terragen 3 just to, to note that. So back to Pixelplow's uh, interface here, uh, it automatically loaded the information about the output resolution from the file. So if you want to change that, you would change it in the TGD and resave it, resubmit. Um, this is 720 by 405 is our render resolution. It loaded the frame range here. Uh, we've got a random rendering order specified. I'm going to go to sequential. Uh, I kind of prefer sequential when I'm doing shorter tests because uh, then I, you know, as I said, it downloads the frames dynamically. So uh, if I'm running 100 frames and it starts to deliver frames, you know, 1, 10, 20, 30 frames back to me and I don't look right, I can see that. I can see the progress of the animation and I can cancel it uh, before the job completes and actually save uh, some money if, if there's any issues that I need to look at. Uh, there's a job priority option here and I'll talk about the priority uh, settings in a minute. The animation budget goal is a cool feature. Uh, it allows you to specify for animation uh, renders at least uh, a goal for your budget. And what what will happen is that say you have 100 frames, it's going to uh, render some of your frames and check to see based on the individual frame render time how long it pro uh, projects that it's going to take to render your entire 100 frame sequence and then how much it's going to cost. And if uh, those initial tests exceed your budget, it will automatically suspend your project. So it'll keep you from going over your budget. And then after those uh, initial frames are rendered and, and checked against that, it'll continuously do that. And at any time, if it looks like the budget is going to be exceeded, it will suspend your project and notify you. So that's pretty cool. You can also specify the output directory for the frames. As I said, they're downloaded dynamically. So uh, you can put them anywhere you want. Um, I'm going to stick them in the same folder as my project. Uh, one thing that's that's handy to know also is you can actually copy paths and just paste them in here if you want to for a quicker way of specifying uh, where you want things to go. If you already have that folder open, you can just copy the path. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, there's an email address for notifications. So it'll tell you if there are errors. It'll also email, when you, uh, email you when the job is complete. That's it. I'm going to submit. All right, so the next step is it's going to look in that uh, folder I've specified. It's going to uh, archive all that information to a single compressed format, and it's going to send it to Pixelplow. So I'm, I'm submitting my project now. This gives me an overview of all the settings I've, I've set for confirmation. I'm confirming. Now, since there's hardly anything in that folder, 
uh, it was super quick. If you had uh, some bigger files in there, if you had some uh, object files, texture files, GI cache files, it would take uh, longer to compress them, but uh, it's gonna save you on some upload time and uh, it's uh, it, it never really takes very long. Uh, it's a, a handy way for them to submit the jobs up automatically to the farm. Okay, so that's uh, been submitted to the render farm. Now we're gonna go and we're gonna look at our queued jobs to check on the status of that. Okay, it's telling me it's 100% uploaded. That's good. Uh, this is the job queue uh, window here. It tells you what your jobs that are queued on the farm currently are. Now, um, one thing that's different about Pixelplow is that uh, there there is a possibility of, of sharing resources based on priority. They give uh, the high priority projects the absolute highest priority. It means you'll get uh, your, your frames back as fast as possible uh, and you'll be able to use uh, the largest proportion of resources. But uh, they do have a sharing system which is useful because let's say that they have 200 machines there and I'm submitting a 100 frame job. A lot of other render farms, they're going to dedicate the entire farm to you and 200 or 100 CPUs are sitting idle while your 100 frame job is rendering. So that's kind of a waste of resources um, and it's one of the reasons why a lot of other render farms are more expensive because uh, they really have to, they've got basically all these wasted resources. Um, the other cool thing about this is if you submit a job at low priority, even though uh, a high priority job that could be submitted on the farm is going to take precedence over you, you're still going to get frames back. You know, there'll be a couple machines at the least that are uh, rendering on your project and you'll you'll get frames back at a steady pace, certainly much faster than you would be able to get on your uh, local machine regardless. So whether you're high priority or low priority, the, uh, the shared resources is a great thing. You will only see your projects in this uh, job queue here. So if there are other people's projects on the, on the farm, you're not going to see those in this queue. Um, so if you have multiple jobs submitted, you can see them here, you can manage them. Gives you a whole bunch of information, the scene file, job number, uh, the status, any exceptions. If there was a problem, it's going to tell you there's an error here. It'll also email you. Uh, when it was submitted, the application, number of frames, percentage complete, and the priority and cost estimate. Uh, cost estimate will come in when it's rendered a couple of frames. So it has to render some initial frames to get a sense of how long they take to render in order to put up a cost estimate. But that's a, another unique feature and it's very handy. You can see how much it's saying your, your project will likely cost to complete. And then uh, it can uh, you, you can decide to cancel it or change the priority if it's too expensive. So say this was saying it was gonna cost $10 and you didn't wanna pay that much. Another cool feature is you can dynamically change the priority. So there's a change priority button here. You can change between low and medium um, and you can do that as many times as you want. Adjust the priority uh, as needed for you know your, your costs and your, your uh, frame delivery time needs. Uh, you can also cancel the job and if you've put a budget on there like I discussed earlier, you can remove that budget. So I've submitted this job to the farm. I'm gonna run a little race here. Uh, I'm gonna start a still frame render of the same scene here the same benchmark scene at the same resolution on my local machine, which should take eh, five minutes, something like that. And uh, we're gonna see uh, whether the, the render farm can beat my local machine rendering way more frames at a time. So we're gonna get a bunch of frames back, uh, hopefully in, in the same time or less that it takes my local machine to render uh, just the one. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna show you how you can submit a still frame a high resolution still frame render to Pixel Plus Render Farm. So again, submit job. And I've got a different, we're gonna use the same application, Terragen 3.1. I've got a different folder here where my high resolution still uh, TGD file is that specifies a higher resolution. You'll see when I load that, it recognizes the output resolution is 4,000 pixels by 2250 pixels. It still shows the 100 frame, the one to 100 frame uh, sequence here and uh, that's in the TGD file it's the default frame range that uh, Terrigen has for all projects and most people are going to have that just because it's it's there by default and people don't think to remove it but you can still specify to just render one frame at high resolution so all you do is you just put one in there it's literally telling it you just want to render that one frame um, as I was mentioning, I think I, I discussed the, the frame, you, you have the ability to uh, specify frame lists here. So you can you can put in 1, 10, 20. It'll fr render frame 1, 10, and 20. You can literally specify specifically that way. You can also add frame ranges. So I could say 30 to 50. The colon is a, a you know means from here to here. So from frame 30 to frame 50. 
Uh, so it's it's the only render farm that I know of that allows you to do sophisticated frame lists like that. Uh, so if you have if you wanted to check just the beginning and end of your animation, let's say you had a thousand frame animation and you wanted the first 150 frames, so from one to 150, and then you wanted the last 150 frames, so from 850 to a thousand. That's something you can do on the render farm. Uh, it's a unique feature, really great to have. We're just going to go with one here. Um, as I was discussing, you can have multiple jobs rendering on the farm, and here if you hover over the job priority, you can see how many jobs are currently rendering. There's two on there, one of them is mine, so there's another job already on the farm. And uh, I, I talked about the, re uh, the rendering order before, it doesn't matter what the rendering order is on, uh, on a still as far as I know, but uh, random is more efficient as I think I mentioned. And uh, that's about it. I would specify the uh, output, res output uh, folder here, and then I would click Submit. Now, uh, I've already rendered this, this still frame, so I'll show you the results of it, but I did want to show you how the uh, still frame rendering process works. So, let's see here. The still frame render is right here. It took about eh, a little less than 15 minutes to render, 4,000 pixels, so it's a lot faster than my local machine. And uh, one of the great features that is uh, helpful for both animations and stills with Pixelplow is they render GI caches now automatically on their render farm. It's a unique feature. No other render farm supports this for TerraGen. And you can see there's no seams, no uh, lighting seams or anything like that in this high resolution uh, still image that was rendered in tiles on the Pixelplow render farm. Uh, it does the same thing for animation. So when you submit a project that uses global illumination, uh, and and would benefit from GI caches, it will automatically detect that. It will generate the GI caches on the farm for a animation sequence. It's going to distribute them across the uh, the render farm just like the re regular render frame, so it's going to be a lot faster than your local machine. And uh, it will render those GI cache files uh, however you've specified in your TGD. So uh, if you want to blend a specific number of frames, you know, three frame blending, five, five frame blending. You can specify that in your TGD. It will be respected by the, the render farm, but it will just take care of the rendered GI caches automatically, which is really a nice feature. So let's see here. Let's check on the status of our uh, of our job. Oh, look at that. So it's 11% complete. It means we've actually got some frames coming in here. There we go. So it was submitted at looks like almost uh, 1648, 448 p.m. or sorry, uh, 348 p.m., 1548, uh, and it's 355 now. So yeah, it's uh, less than less than 10 minutes, and I've got almost 30 frames back. So that's pretty pretty good, pretty fast. Um, here it is, frames I got back in uh, in less than 10 minutes. I've got. 27 frames, so it's a heck of a lot faster than running on a local machine. Uh, I'm still rendering this frame now, and it looks like it's going to end up taking more like 10 minutes. Uh, so the uh, the farm is an incredible time saver. Uh, this particular render looks like it's predicted to cost about nine dollars, uh, so that's that's not too bad. And if I wanted to uh, improve the cost on that, if I didn't care so much about how fast it was coming in, I can just change the priority to low, and it's gonna uh, it's gonna dynamically change the priority down and uh, it's going to give me a new cost estimate as it as it updates that um, based on the next frames that uh, they get rendered so yeah I think that's about it uh, for the the render farm demonstration uh, as you can see it's a very simple to use system it's very smooth it works directly from your local machine uh, it's got a lot of advantages and improvements over working with a lot of traditional render farms where you have to you know, zip up your files and send them manually through a web interface, check the status on the web, uh, all that kind of stuff. It's a dedicated uh, system. And uh, they're also very responsive to uh, you know, new features, improvements. They're very uh, focused on what TerraGen can do and making uh, the best of it on a render farm and improving their services constantly. The GI feature is a new one, uh, a relatively new one on their farm, and they're just constantly improving things. Uh, they also have the lowest prices in the industry for TerraGen renders. It's one cent per gigahertz hour. So uh, yeah, it costs hardly anything to check them out. You can sign up online and uh, get started right away. So go check them out. All right, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.